Hello, this is Jimmy the Font Meister, and welcome to the Fontographer tutorial series again. Today we're going to get into some fine details of creating a bold font. And we want to create a bold font which is technically and artistically uniform when it's compared to the plain version of the same font. Before taking these steps, it's a good idea to load a commercial bold font into the template layer of Fontographer, as you can see here and then load that font's plain version into the outline layer. If you use a serif font like Garamon, you will see several issues that need to be addressed when viewing the outline over the template. First of all, notice that the vertical parts of a character's design are going to gain weight faster than the thinner parts. It's not uniform. This is also true of the serifs they will gain in thickness at a faster rate than the narrow portion of a character. And it's also common for serifs to become a little longer. You'll notice that the serifs become thick in relation to the thinnest stem in the character. Wide stems will grow wider and now they're out of proportion to the thin stems. The stems are going to grow taller so now the character needs to be moved down in relation to the baseline. This scenario is not as prevalent in evenly weighted fonts such as Helvetica, but it's still noticeable in the condensed version of those fonts, because when you condense a font it creates stress, especially at the point where the bowls and counters connect to the stems. Characters would have to be scaled in order to remain perfectly sized in relation to the M square. Here are some steps you can use to take a plain font and use it as a basis for building a bold font. You can go to Edit and select All. Go to Element and change weight. Make sure you have the checkbox on for correct path direction and these two checkboxes off for preserving the vertical size and horizontal size. Now I might suggest that you change it by 70%. There are formulas that you can use for that. Now, the change weight feature could cause your stems to grow in such a way as they could overlap other parts of the character. So you're going to have to keep a close eye on this if you want to make a professional bold font. And finally, it's impossible to tell you exactly what to do because these instructions are going to differ for font characters that have thick and thin stems inside the same font as opposed to a font which has uniformly sized stems. So those are some things you need to think about when making a professional bold font. Thank you for watching the Fontara for Tutorial series and let us know if there are some other issues you'd like to see covered in the series and take a look at your user guide for more details.